Daniel out here at Steve Holcomb Pro Auto Custom Interiors. And uh, over the next couple days, he's going to be installing a custom convertible top. And I thought you'd all be interested in the process. It's going to be a long video, but it's about four days worth of work crammed into however long this video is. I sure hope you all enjoy it. Right now, we're going to show you the reason why we custom build convertible tops. <clears throat> this right here is a prime example. This car right here come in. This is a factory convertible top installed. And it's actually installed right. And you can see how, you see right in here, see all of this uh, rubber and everything? And see how far the uh, top is off of the windows? You see how all the way down through here? So when we get through making a custom top, all of this right here is gonna be just right above this glass right here. So you get a nice clean finished look when it's all done. So we, you won't be seeing all of this rubber and all that, all that's gonna be gone. Now, it is a lot easier just to buy a top and install it, but this is what you get when you buy uh, a top and install it. You get to see all the rubber. And then the back glass, see if they're not installed right, this is what you get. You get a bunch of wrinkles, wrinkles and everything in it, and then once they're in there, there's nothing you can do about getting them out. So this has to be installed right, and once it's installed right, these will always, no matter if you lift the top up and down, this will still be wrinkle free. Right here, what I'm doing is looking through here, I'm putting a top on a 59 Chevrolet Impala. Each one of these uh, is a bow height. Different years, different bow heights. So I'm looking up, <clears throat> 5960 is the same one, so I need a 22 and a half inch bow height. Okay. If you notice the years right before, that's 22, it's a half inch difference. Right. And then the ones before that was back to 20 and a half. So each one of these are a little different, so you want to just make sure that your bow height is and set. And then I guess each, uh, mo each model will be different also. Every single one of them is different. Now they may have the same number periodically, but you need to check it, to just to double check and make sure. Since I got a short term memory, I'm going to mark it right here. 22 and a half inch bow height. So I just put it on a piece of tape. And where is that bow height to? To the top of this right here? Right. To, to the top of that. And we'll measure that here in a minute. I'm fixing to set the bow height on this thing. So I'm going to pull it up here. And I just like using a piece of tape where I can adjust it. So it's pretty. I just got it sitting up here. And we're going to measure. Let's see. See? 22, it's and, a half. 22 and a half. <laughs> so I need to come back here a pretty good bit. So I'm just going to loosen this up. Drop that down, 22 and a half. Now I like to leave it just a tad so I can, when I pull that window, it'll pull it down to exactly 22 and a half. So I got it at 22 and three quarters right now. Okay, so about a quarter inch. Yeah, and then when I pull that, put pressure on it, it's gonna tighten up the pads gotcha. and tighten up the thing. All right, Scotty, what I'm doing now is, now that i got my bow height determined, I'm gonna put more, something a little bit more sturdy up here to make sure that that bow height stays where it's going to be at. What is that bailing wire? It is. Roughly what size? Uh, that's a, that size. <laughs> that's a little small stuff. So any thin it's wire? Like, it's almost like a little welding wire. Right. About that same uh, thing. Any kind of wire that's pliable enough to wrap around or yet hold it sturdy. Okay. All right, now we have our bow height determined what size it's going to be. It's still not ready yet because if you look at it, this side of the bow is sitting way down. That side of the bow is sticking way up. So now Twisted. we got to make sure both of these are exactly even or you're going to have an ugly top. They're going to go down the road like this. You can't fix that by putting the top on it. No. Now is no, the time to get it fixed. you gotta, it, you got to have a perfect foundation to build the top on. Okay, so I'm going to find a solid place to measure from which will be this second bow up. Measure to the back bow and see we're right at 21 and three quarters on this side. Measure from the same place on the other side that we did the other side, and we're right at 20. So we're quite a bit off. See how this side's closer than that side. So now we're gonna fix that problem. Okay, what we've done here, Scotty, is that I've got two perfectly good sized blocks, <clears throat> one for each side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this bow back and put this in exactly like the other side is, that bow will not move at all. I mean, you got a good solid uh, foundation to put your pads on. I was just noticing on this car, we are setting these bows and it didn't exactly line up. I was giving them remeasuring everything. And this side, this side from the factory, this is all factory frame, this side is about an inch longer than the other side. So we're gonna have to compensate for all that to make it look good. To fix that problem we just had, I had to shorten this block a little bit. What you mainly want to do is make sure that it's exactly the same height from this point to this point, 
and that point to that point. That way, when you're behind it and you're looking up, it's nice and square. You're not gonna pay attention to this bowl or this bowl at all. As long as this right here is where it needs to be, then the rest of your top will be perfect. Okay, now that we've got everything set, I went ahead and put a couple extra wires over here just to make sure that bow stays crossed over there. We're gonna check a bow height. It's exactly where we need it to be, 22 and 3 quarters, because I just want to leave it just a tad long. That way when I put pressure on it, it'll pull it back. Then double check right here. That's 21 and 3 quarters, and it should be the same on the other side. Okay, now that all that's set, we're gonna measure out for convertible top pads. I custom make convertible top pads for these things also, instead of using a, a universal. So we're gonna need top pads 62 inches by 14 inches. All right, Scotty, what we're doing right here, I just got a piece of cloth. I'm making a set of convertible top pads for it, and they're going to be custom, so I'm just making a pattern at this point. And what does the pad do? The pad keeps all the convertible top frame in line, keeps the convertible top in line. It just That's just a keeps them body of everything. Right. Yeah. I got you. And so there's going to be one on each side, or will the whole top be covered in pad? No, it'll be one on each side. And there's a little groove in these, uh, pad, in these bows from the factory. That pad sits right inside that groove right there. See how oh, yeah. it comes up? Right. That's actually recessed for your pad to go in so that when the top's on it, it looks nice and smooth. So what I'm gonna do is here, is I want the pad to come all the way down to about right here, just right above this rail, rail right here. So I'm just gonna mark it just like this, all the way down. And The aftermarket universal pads, they're just straight and they come straight back like here. Well, I like to fill in some of this right here too so you don't have big old wrinkles and everything when the top's on. It just helps fill out the top and makes it more durable and secure. And is there, does it matter which, that you're just using that to make the pattern, right? Yeah, this is just a piece of cloth that I'm making a pattern with. Strap, and it doesn't I'll, matter. Exactly, I'll transfer this to the stay fast material that we're actually gonna build the convertible top out of. Okay, at this point, we just trim that down to fit just right above this. You don't want this to overlap this because when you make your convertible top, the convertible top will overlap. So this needs to stay just right behind this. That way when the top's in, this will just barely push in so you got a nice clean edge on your top. Now we're going to transfer this to the stay fast material. We staple it in right through here and on the top to hold it in place. When we do the final fit, it'll have screws right here, staples here, staples here, and staples here. And we'll get show you that process when we put the pads on. Now I'm going to take this pad, and this pad will be the exact same on both sides. Even though that side is just a little shorter, or whichever, you can you can make that up with this right here. So you'll lengthen, or just just according to where you put your staples at. You'll start back here, pull it frontwards, and if you know wherever it ends up is where it ends up, and you staple it. So what you do is you make one pattern and you make it that way on the padding and then you flip the pattern over and make it the other way. Uh, right and the left, yeah. And exactly. that'll make the other side for you. Yeah, and then you can set this where it needs to go on that side and then you can uh, adjust it to the front and the back to get your uh, the exact length that you need. All right, Scott, the next step I'm going to do is there's a little factory hose in all these right here. I'm going to tap these holes out so that it will be easy when we go to put the convertible top on to run these bolts through the new uh, tack strip and bolt it to the car. Because if not, all these cars, when they paint them, they get garbage and stuff in them threads, and it's impossible to get them things in there without a lot of work. So to prevent that, we just go ahead and do this right here. Clean all the threads up. That way, uh, when you go to install the top, you put your nuts in, your bolts, they just like that right there. So you they make it a life a lot easier when you when you go to finish finish it up. Okay, this is right here is our rolling material that we're going to use to make the convertible top with and the uh, new pads. So as you see, it all just comes in a roll. We just buy roll goods. Everything's made from scratch. Is it called convertible top material or what's the name of it? Stay fast. Stay fast. And where do you get it at? You can get it at I get it at Miami Rubber, Miami okay. Corporation. Uh, they work with me real well. There's quite a few companies that sell this. So is there different grades of it or is it Stay Fast the name brand and that's the good stuff? Yeah, Stay Fast is good stuff and then they make a German uh, wool or a German German top. It's just got a headliner, different styles headliners inside of it. On this one right here, I actually 
ordered a red top with a black inside. The convertible top frame and everything's black. So we're going to do. So you can plant. custom order them to colors. Some of them, yeah. You can get like tan on tan, black on black, and black on brown. You know, there's a few things that you can do. Right. So you know, just according to what type of materials you use. Uh, when you order this convertible top material also, we order the binding that goes around the, after you, it finishes up all your edges on your top when you sew it up. So it just folds in like that and you run it through the sewing machine with the color stitching that you want. And it just gives it a nice clean edge all the way around you. It gives you that factory edge, just like so when you go all the way around it. And then you get the same color wire on, on the very top of the convertible top after you finish putting all your uh, staples and stuff in it. This right here will actually stretch from one side to the other. You'll staple it together and then fold it and then put two little chrome ends on it and you have a finished product. So what are those two products called to make sure you get? Binding? Yeah, this right here is called binding. Okay. And this is called wire on. Okay, at this point we got the material rolled out up on the table. Now I need to measure and see exactly how much I need to cut and make sure I ordered enough. Fingers crossed. Exactly. So right now I'm going to measure my sides. I need to leave a couple inches off the front and then a few inches off the back. So I'm going to need the sides to be about 93 inches on this particular job. Now we're going to measure down the sides and see how wide we need it. So I'm going to come down where the tack strip goes at and measure about approximately up there. It's going to be a little big. You want to leave yourself a little extra? Yeah, exactly. So. That wound up being 25 inches. So we got one piece, 93 by 25. Right now I'm measuring the middle. This will be three piece top. So you'll get a middle part and then two sides. So the, the middle part don't have to be as long as the side. Sides go all the way back to here. The middle is only gonna come back so far. So I'm gonna measure about, I've got about six foot. Okay, right now I'm fixing to cut out the middle part of that top. So we see what materials we have left over. I always square this edge up right here so that we know we've got a good start. Square edge to work with from the beginning. Don't take for granted that it was cut square at the factory. Oh no, it's definitely not cut square. So you'll have to square it up yourself. And the best thing to use a yardstick and a uh, razor blade to do that? Make sure you have a good square. Square. Yeah. And I'm gonna make this uh, 50 inches. This will be the center deck. And then we'll, this will be what we sew our two sides on. So we're going to do the 50 by 6 foot. At this point right here, Scott, I'm actually making the uh, side pattern closely to what I'm needing for the convertible top. So I can set the material up there and get a uh, get something to work with. So you can use any kind of uh, material as long as it's enough to cover this. Yeah, this area. is just all scrap material that we have here. We use for like bottom of floor mats and things like that. Right. So I'm using it. It's a lot better to make you a pattern out of something that's not going to cost you a fortune, like the right. stay fast material. So. So you can sort of see what the convertible top is going to Yeah, I see a lot. Now, where, where are you uh, tucking it down to? Now at this point right here, there's a, tack, there's a tack strip that goes inside this. So I'm leaving this material a little bit long. I know that I've got to staple my material to the tack strip. Right. So all I'm doing right now at this point is getting a, a close proximity of what the convertible top material needs to be. See, because. I'm fixing to cut out my pads, and I'm going to need the part I just cut out right here. Right. I'm going to run it the rest of the way up the roll to get my pads, and we're going to make the pads next. But I need to make sure that I've got enough material to make my both sides and my middle for the convertible top, and then what's left over, I can use the pads. But usually, if you start up here at the front and measure all the way back here to the back, if that's um, two yards of material, then you know you're going. To, this one side will do. Two yards will do both sides, and then you're going to need another however many yards this is to do the, the middle part. So you do two plus two will be four and then you've got all your accessories so you'd add another yard and you got about five yards of material. So so because of the width of the material you can do the sides out of a running yard. Right. And then the center will take a whole running yard. Okay now what we've done here is this piece of material that was down there getting a close estimate of how much material we're going to need. This allowed me to see what I'm going to have to have for the two sides since I wasn't long enough to make the pads after this, 
there's no sense in wasting any more material, so I'm gonna cut the pads out of the center of these two right here. And then we'll make the convertible top pads and install them. All right, what we're doing right here, I got a, I bought some microfiber um, topping I'm gonna put on top of these Stay Fast pads just to hold the uh, foam in place. So that's what I'm doing now, is cutting that out and we're fixing to sew it up. Does it matter what color that material is? Will that show and all? Well, I like to try to get the color about the same. So the inside of that's going to be black. Right. So I like to, you know, when these are folded over, that'll be black also. So when you let the top down, up and down, you don't see like a pink on one side or purple on the other right. side. I like to try to keep everything where it just disappears. At this point right here, we're making convertible top pads. And, uh, I'm putting a black binding. All the interior on the top will be black. All the exterior will be red. Okay, here I'm, I sewed all that material on in one, one big piece, and now I'm splitting it down the middle. That way I can open it up, put all my staples on the top, bolt it onto the frame, and then we'll put a foam pad underneath there, and then this glue on top of that, and then that'll glue on top of that. Now what I'm doing here, Scotty, is I'm up. Cut, going ahead and cutting my foam that I'm going to lay inside the pad. And this is a quarter inch sew foam. A lot of people use a half inch, but then when the top's done, the top looks a little puffy on the side. It just looks too big. So a quarter inch keeps it nice and clean and sleek looking. See, so you want to make sure you stretch your convertible top pads really nice and tight so there's no wrinkles at all in there. So putting a convertible top over that pad is not going to hide anything. You want to make sure that's smooth. That's oh, yeah. part of the good foundation of it. Exactly. You don't want this to be all wrinkled up or anything. You want that to lay in there nice and neat. And just be just, just right above that rail right there and that'll give you room for your top to lay down in there. Oh, right now, Scotty, we're, uh, <laughs> we're actually putting some screws in this one because this particular bow right here has little holes in it that you put screws in where the rest of these had tack strips. Okay. So not every, every bowl will have a tack strip where you can staple into it. Okay. Some of you will have to actually put screws in. This point right here, we're gluing a convertible top padding to the pads. Convertible top pad, the foam part, just right out, right, even with the staples. So there's a little groove right in there. Let's take and put it right in there. And then glued all this. I smooth this over. And then I'll come back through and restaple the top of that to hold all this in place. Uh, what are we, I'm trimming this uh, excess off, excess. And then we restapled all of it to go across through there. Same with the back. And we'll have a finished pad, and then we'll duplicate the other side. Now that we got the pads complete and put on, we need to make some quarter pads back here to help hold this uh, convertible top real nice and neat. Plus, it holds your uh, that last bowl good and tight in place, and it just secures everything together. So what we need to do is we need to measure from here to here and see how long how long we need one. So. We're gonna need, I, I estimate about 26 inches, about around 13. And then we'll set, I already made the pad, so now I'm gonna show you what, how I got that. So I cut a piece, 26 by 13, laid it up here. And I wanted this mark to be the same as that mark, so that when you look inside, it all matches real, real nice and neat. This right here tucks in to where the tack strip's gonna be at. And I'll reach, I'll put all that down in there and then uh, take a mark and mark it out. Chalk it. Cut it up and, it's, and uh, now it's ready to sell. A new texture, we ordered a brand new texture for the 59. And then uh, I, got a, I went ahead and ordered a factory original deep well from the Miami Corporation. And now I'm fixing to install this first, this first thing that goes on. Once this is stapled on, then you can staple the back pads on, and then your back glass will be the next thing. So, what you want to do is make sure it lines up in the middle, and then work your way from the middle out on both sides. That way, both sides will be the exact same. Right here, what I've done, since we're going to put a factory plastic window in this car, I went ahead and ordered a 
an original back glass because they do a good job making the back glass and they fit good and everything. So I called the man to court, talked to Mike Geiger. He's the man. He's always taking care of me and he'll take care of you too if you need anything. All of this stuff that you need for a cars, you can call him and he'll he can be more than happy to take care of you. Now the reason I bought this is because it's already all sewn up with a zipper. Now I do make convertible tops with a hard glass on cars that does not come factory with a hard glass. It's a lot more work and it's a lot more money. But this this guy right here didn't want the aggravation of actually having to pull the back glass out and set it down and then top, put the top down. So with the plastic window, you can just set the top down um, without taking the back glass out. So you can order these in any color you want. These right here, you can order to match your uh, match your top. So I ordered a black uh, inside and red on the outside. So the outside of the car is gonna be a red top. The inside will be black. So this is all ready to go. We're just gonna fasten it and then we're gonna install it into the car and make sure it fits. Okay, now what we're doing here is installing the rear curtain to the tack strip. And again, you want to start right here in the middle, get it lined up exactly in the middle, and then work your way out both sides. That way, your curtain's not off to one side or the other. And how do you decide where to pull that to? See, like most of these, it's factory. Right. It's got a little notch in the center of the um, window oh. with a line on it. So you actually pull that notch oh, right okay. there. Yeah. And that line sits on top of that bow right there. So pretty easy when you just order an original one. Right. The hard part is making one. All right, Scotty, we've just finished up putting this uh, back window on the tack strip. And what I've done to make it easy to install into the car, every hole that was in there, I went ahead and trimmed out so that you can put the, the bolt right through it. You don't have to fight with the material. These right here actually had extensions to go on. We added them to it. And a few minutes ago, I said the first thing we need to do is add the pad, but I was wrong. I, I meant to say the window and then the pad. So the next thing we'll do is install the pad. We'll have, the reason the pad goes on last is because when this is up, this, this zipper will unzip and the top will actually, you can lay this down and the pads will still be up there holding that convertible top up nice and neat. Some of this is a little guesswork, but not really. If you do a bunch of them, you can get it exactly where it goes. Now I looked in the car and I determined where I wanted my pads at and I looked and where did this piece look? I looked at where this bolt hole is right here. Okay. This bolt hole that's going to bolt into the car. I know I want it to be about an inch away from that bolt hole on this particular job. So I'm coming out here. That's going to be where my first uh, staple is going to be at. Very important to line this part up first. And then this next part. The angle of that window is going to be about like that right there and I want this pad to follow that angle. So that's going to determine where this right here mounts to. You see if you, if you get your angle off, you get that out of the way, so your pad will be shooting up crooked. So this is a, a really a, a pain to get these things exactly right. This is where 30 years of experience yeah. comes to play. So I know exactly about where that window is going to be at. So. That's, that's the angle I want the pad to be at. So I've left my paddle alone. So now I'm gonna come around this thing right here and staple. If you notice, my material is gonna look like it's a little long on this side. It's gonna come up, but that's for a reason. And like I said, these things are a pain to get exactly right. So I may wind up having to take this out, but we'll find out here in just a second. Just to make sure that I got the angle right. The tack strip I just showed you sitting over on the table when we put the, the glass and the pads on, now we've, we got to attach it to the car. So the only way to do that is lift, you set it in the car and then you gotta lift up this deep well right here. And this is the part you work in the dark almost. You have to, Find your uh, bolt holes and, and go ahead and line it up and put your bolts into the into the body. Are those threaded or they have a nut on the back? These are threaded uh, into the body. Uh, the body's already got their threads on. So this one's not too bad. All right, Scotty, at this point right here, we have the tack strip all tacked to the back of the car. Time to staple this to this. So we need to move, remove all of our uh, little things to help this up with. 
the so wood too? Yeah, we're going to remove everything now. And the hood, then it should stay all right because of the padding and all, keep it there? Yeah, once see, I'm fixing to put tension on this and put and staple this, so all of it will stay in place. And once that's stapled in place where I want to put it, then I'll just staple that pad up there, and then it's always going to stay that way. But at this moment, moment, what I'm doing is heating up this glass, this plastic window, with a heat gun. You don't want to touch it at all with it because you'll put a scratch in it. And then once I get that thing good and heated, I'm going to pull all of the uh, wrinkles out of it and staple it, and that's where we're going to stay at. We have it all stretched up there nice and tight, looking like a piece of glass. Everything fits good, so now I'm going to trim off the excess across the top of this header bowl right here, tack strip. At this point, we're going to staple the pads on. And remember when I started at the beginning, I said you have to sort of guess a little bit at this. Everything fits perfectly, all these sides fit. But if you notice, we're just a little bit loose right here. So when I take all this back off to fasten the convertible top down, I'm going to measure that. It looks like I need to bring it down about an inch on this corner. Everything else looks nice. So when I take it off, I'll just measure down an inch right here and then blend it into right there and we'll have a perfect pad. What we got right here, see this factory little edge in this convertible top frame, header bowl? That's actually where the convertible top is gonna to be seamed at and that seam lays right inside this and folds around there. So what I need to do is determine how far it is from here to here. That's gonna be how far my top center deck needs to be all the way back so it looks square. So I measured this up, 49 inches, about my middle mark. That's right there. And then back here, you find your middle mark, you measure out, it's 49 inches, it'll be 24 and a half per side. Mark that. And then uh, what you do is you find the middle, you want to find all these middle bows. So I'll do it like that right there, and this is the middle. There's the middle. So now we've got a mark right down the center of the car. We know we need 24 and a half on this side and 24 and a half on this side. So then, I just go down each one of these right here, mark 24 and a half. Twenty-four and a half. Now I'm gonna give me a straight edge, and I'm gonna put it right on that line right there, and draw me a straight line, and that's where my um, seam was gonna sit. Now some of these places, when I actually make the top, the way the top bows, it may be a little longer on the convert on the center. You won't make it square. It'll, it'll almost maybe look like it's a little rounded, but when you put it on this right here, it'll look perfectly square. I already made my marks on, on the pads where I needed to be, so I laid the center deck up there. Now I'm going through here and marking each one of these, just lifting up that edge. And I know exactly where I want this, my sole line, sole line to be at. So everywhere I'm marking, that's gonna be my sole line. I'm gonna go through there and mark, it, mark the straight line. I know as long as I stay on that, the middle part will be in good shape. Right here, if you notice the way this top's going, if I made these sides just come straight like this is, we're gonna have our pads and everything showing. So what you do is just like the factory top does, you make a dart this way and then the, the, this top comes around and then this will sort of roll down this way. You'll see how it looks in the final shot. But this is how I get that mark. You start right here where the staples are at, and this right here, I just guesstimated. So I, I actually measured 20 inches off of this, 20 inches off that way. And then that right there will be my mark. That'll be my sole line. And this right here will be where I cut it off at. What is the 20 inches? Where did you come up just eyeballing? That's where you Yeah, I don't it. See, because you, you want the window to be pretty big. Right. So, But you want the pads to be covered up. So I come over where we're just a couple inches off of the pad right here. And I uh, measured from here over and see what that was. It was 20 inches, so I put 20 inches on the other side. Because you, you, you don't, I wouldn't be able to mark it over here because then when I sewed it up, you'd see the pad. But you don't want to mark it over here because then your top would be, your small glass would be window. too small. Yeah. I took the original piece that I estimated about how much I needed to mark off. Now, that's my pattern. Now I'm going to take and fit my pattern. This part up here, exactly where I need to do it. And then I'm going to transfer that measurement to the original top and then sew this part together and then I have to install the whole top and then roll these windows up and get ex the exact measurement. I've got to put the whole thing together just like it was a finished product with the screws and everything on the back, pull it up there and then, then I mark 
where these windows, I'll roll this window up and that top trim right there will lay just right inside that right there. And then I have to take it all back apart, take it upstairs and sew all my binding and stuff around the sides of it to give it that finished product. See, and, this, and using a piece of pattern right here, I can lay this material up here flat. I can cut notches out in the pattern because it's, you know, it's just a pattern. And that'll, that'll help me lay all this stuff out. When this is laid flat and this is laid flat, you notice we got a, a big seam right there we'll have to do something with. So what you do is you fold that down where the, where the tack strip is gonna be. You have to mark it right there. And then you pull it back up again this way. And that's where you're gonna staple at. Now when I sew this together, I'm gonna cut this out and then this will overlap this. And when I sew it to the top, that'll be, a, that'll be hidden with our tack strip that we're gonna hide all the staples with. You almost got it down to where you'll have nothing left over. That's the way it's planned. You know, that stuff costs too much to have uh, any thorn in the garbage. Is there something you'll do with this center section here? Is those the last pieces you're going to No, that's out? about all I can do with it. I mean, you know, if you had any left over long enough that you can make another set of convertible top pads or something, you know, you could do that with it. This is good for maybe like putting underneath seat bottoms and things like that when you go to uh, make a custom seat if you have a lot of it, because it's a good, it won't rip on you real easy. So hardly anything goes to the garbage can. Right, right. Okay, we use all of it. Point right here, I'm sewing the sides onto this big middle piece, and then I'll go down there, double check everything, fit it, and then we'll mark out for our sides and then sew all that up, and then we'll do a final uh, installation on it. How do you uh, how do you determine how much gas, or, you know I'm saying, the two pieces of material you use there? I usually leave about a half inch clearance, uh, sew allowance on both of them, and then that way the half inch, when I sew it and put a top stitch on it, it's got a nice finished edge on it. Let's so this will have two stitches in it or one? <coughs> It'll have one. Okay. Since the last shot, we went ahead and seamed up all of this, put the top stitch in it, so uh, put a single seam around top of it because that's the way the originals, actually the originals come with a heat seal, so we put a single seam, a, a French seam just don't look right in convertible tops and they never ever came factory with one. Right. So we leave it like that. So I set the top up where I was going to put it. I went ahead and bound the back window, so we went ahead and bound that. And then, because that's not going to change, and this right here is not going to change. Now that stuff around the back window, was that something that came in that box, or is that something you make? Yeah, that, was, that was that binding I okay. showed you originally. Okay. Now, in laying this top up here, I know from my marks that, see, this staple's got to go right on that line right there, because that's the line, that was with my sole line originally. So I'm going to put that one right there. I go over to the other side and do the same thing. This cannot move, so it can't be too far forward or too far back. It's got a staple to that bow that everything else is stapled to. So you want to get that thing lined up first, and then that'll determine where the top goes and where the back goes. So your two set points are both sides of this in the back. Yeah, this is got a, This is where your starting point is. You have to start here. Now that we've uh, I've rolled all my windows up, make sure that the convertible top was adjusted right to where your windows roll up and down and all that stuff. You want always want to make sure that the frame and your your windows, all that stuff, lined up neat. Now that the windows up, and they roll up. We can mark, start marking our top where we're going to sew this line at. Then, as I've opened the door and brought this convertible top frame, the glass frame to the outside. So we know that the top has got to go, uh, this, this door's got to open and shut without hitting that top. So we know the least amount that that top can hang down is this far. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my window all the way back. I can't take the back window out, so I'm just gonna follow it with my fingers. I can feel, I can feel right there where the frame is. So I'm gonna just make me a little mark right down through here that I'm gonna cut off. We got all this trimmed out right. Uh, make sure the window goes right underneath it. Then when I get my binding put on there, only thing you'll see is that chrome. You'll see any of the rubber or anything behind the behind this top. I'm making a reinforcement. I'm fixing to sew my binding on this, but I want these sides to be reinforced, make them a little stiffer. So we're gonna take the material that we have left and we're gonna make reinforcements for both sides. And then we got to sew, I'll have to take and make me some flaps that I'll glue on underneath the rubber. We're going to put them right here and then right here on this very last bolt. We'll have to pull the rubber off and then that glues on, on that and then we'll install the rubber back on that. helps hold the sides in place. Point right here, 
here, I have all my flaps sewn into the top. That's gonna glue up underneath the rubber. The final piece on this is sewing this last piece of binding on it. And then we're gonna go install the top. Okay, how's that binding go on? Does it fold over that edge? It is, it, uh, part of it stays underneath it. And you catch it with the bottom and the top. I'll show you right here. It's just, it's a double folded edge. It's got a, a good uh, finished in on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is fold this right in half, just like that. And I'm gonna sew the top half, and it automatically catches the bottom half. So you just wanna make sure that that's right in the middle. And you stay right on that edge. And stay right straight. on that edge, yeah. We've got the top all sewn up. These right here is the original sew lines that we're gonna make. So I know these sew lines should mark up exactly with these sew lines. And this part right here, like I said earlier, we had this part has to go in the exact right place. And then we'll pull the front and back. So what I'm gonna do is line this up exactly where it goes. And we're gonna go ahead and staple this in place right here. So this, at this point right here, none of this can change. All of this has to go right on that, on that tack strip. Okay, now at this point right here, originally we was talking about that little notch right there. That seam's gonna go right inside that notch. I'm just gonna use these clamps to hold it in place for a second until I uh, get the rest of it stretched out. So I'm gonna pull this up here. It sits right down in that groove. <clears throat> and that's where that one's gonna stay at. You sort of see how it's all coming together. I get all this back pulled out, it should just be just right enough to at this moment, it's close, but you see how it's hiding all the rubber and everything. You see how we just put that one in that notch and this one right here lined up perfectly in that notch. That little notch that was in the metal when that seam is sewed around, you see how it just leaves that all flat. Right on. So that's why they put them notches there to keep that thing from having a big bump. Now I'm just putting these clips in there to hold it in place until I get the back of it tacked. I like to get the back tack first and then pull it, stretch it tight to the front. I'm ready to take all of this back out and attach this back part. So I'm gonna pull that down to where it's flat. So I'm gonna put a mark right here and that's gonna be a mark when I take all this stuff apart. I'm gonna line this mark up with that line so I know that, that'll lay flat. And then I come in here and I make a little mark. And that way when I know when all this is apart, I'm gonna line this up with this. I'm gonna line that up with that, and I'm gonna start my staples down around this way. Now this right here, I know that the tack strip's down only about that far, so I'm just gonna trim off some of this excess right here. Not too much, because you don't wanna do this whole job over so again. If you don't mark it when you get this out, you just got a bunch of material you don't know where to go with. It. So I line that up right there. I keep it on that line, line it up with that, and I, when it, I'm gonna go ahead and start tacking it around this right here. Some of this is gonna be a little guesswork. That's why you have to pull it in and out of time. Once you put it in once, you'll see where you gotta tweak it down, how much here and there. You may need a half inch here, quarter inch here. You know, it's just something Where you like pull it. the staples out and then re-staple it then to make adjustments? Yeah, but you to make sure you don't pull it too tight first because then if you have to loosen it up, then you got staples up here. Uh, okay. So you gotta leave it a little loose and then once you put it back in, you can see how much to pull down. Okay, so, cool. This thing pretty much attached almost where it was gonna go. I fastened all this to the bow. Remember I was talking about we need to just get it close. Now you see, you see this right here? I've got to measure down. I know I've got to adjust this, pull this down just a little bit. But if you pull it too much, you're gonna pull the wrinkle right here. See what it does? So I mean, everything's got to be pulled exactly. So I need to pull, everything looks good from here up. All that looks good. So I need to fix it from here. to right here. I know this is right and I know this is right. So all I gotta do is I just gotta pull this down this way a little bit and then put it all back together. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just double check it, see where we gotta pull just a little bit and then we'll be ready to go. All this stuff lines up real nice and neat underneath the, the top. 
So I know all that's about ready to go. Now we'll have to do the finish. You know, we'll roll around this, glue it, staple it, and all that when it's done. But I just want to make sure that all this lines up where it needs to go. All that's fitted right. So now all we gotta do is adjust both sides back here in the corner, and then start putting a rubber and everything back on it. This point right here, I went ahead and tacked this front. Um, it's got a little tack strip underneath the bottom of it. I pulled the material around, tacked it where it needs to be so I can figure out exactly what I need to do back here. So we got all these sides looking real nice and slick. But, see, I still got this little bit of wrinkle right here on both sides. So what I'm gonna have to take, the, take this whole thing back apart again and pull this down about a half inch and pull it that way on both sides about a half inch to get get it smooth right there. So that is perfect. Yeah. And that's the difference right Most there. Most trash shops will leave it just like it is right there because right. they don't want fool with pulling it all back apart. Because it's been together and back apart about three or four times at this point. Yeah, it's a good thing you don't film that part. Yeah, well, we wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, we couldn't do that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, the thing is, is you make a little of adjustment. You think you got it. You put it back. Sometimes you told me, I know I don't have it on this one, but I got to get that right so I can figure out how much I need to do on this next pull. Yeah. So it's the, it's so a tedious. It's Details, right? right? We got all this side real nice and straight now. The only thing we lack is just this little bit back in this corner right here. So once we get that done, then we can pull, put the rubbers back on it, and put the final touches on it, and put the wire on on it, and, and the little clips, and we'll be ready to go. We got this pulled about every which way we can pull it. It's almost completely 100% wrinkle-free. Got just a little bit right here, but there's really nowhere to pull it anywhere else. So what I'm gonna do is use the steamer and just put a little bit of steam on it. If you notice the top, they don't have any steam at all on it yet. And it's almost perfect. But there's some things that just needs a little bit of steam on it. And that little bit right there is all the thing we like. So we've done a pretty good job installing this top. Do you pull on it now when it's steamed or you just, the steam will get them wrinkles to release? Well, steam pretty much relaxes that material and allow it to, sort of mold in as you say so it's I pull on it a little bit and let it dry you know sort of blow it because right now it's really flimsy we steamed it a little bit this is where the frustration comes in I gotta take all this back apart again because it needs to be pulled down just a little bit I mean you're talking about a quarter inch right there to get that slackness out of that right there so I'm gonna take the whole thing back apart. But that's a lifetime of wrinkles versus another hour. Versus, yeah, yeah, exactly, so. That's I mean, what you're paying for it, for a lot of custom interiors. It's very frustrating, but at the end of the day, you got a nice top. What we're doing right here is we're gonna put the hide them on. This actually hides the seam, it goes all the way across, and you put the little chrome ends on it. And uh, I'm gonna come down to where it's about. I'll come down to where it looks good. So, and then I measure the other side and cut it off the exact length from this line right here. That way both sides are exactly the same. All right, what I'm gonna do here, I'm, I've got that staple good on that side, now I'm gonna pull a good straight line all the way across that and I'll set it right over my staples. Just like so. I'm gonna tack that in place. Now we've got a good straight line all the way across the top of that. I'm just gonna run a roll of staples right down it. What I'm doing here is just taking a little edge and, and pressing that wire on down a little bit where it'll make it easier to fold. Go down both sides. Do it all folds evenly. Gonna roll it over a little bit. I just barely roll it over. Then I take a clean rubber mallet and just uh, push it right down in place. Now to get that finished edge right there, we're gonna put on two little chrome tips. Now this is the part you don't wanna mess up on because I've seen it done before and I've done it. When you go to put these screws in here and slip, and you either, that's why I'm holding my fingers so tight to this. So if I slip, I'll just bust up my fingers instead of putting a hole through this convertible top. Let's not do that. Because if you put a hole through the convertible top, you're starting over. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. You'll be here another we're three. Out of here. You're gonna be here another three days, sitting here watching me build another top. 
We're out of here if you screw this <laughs> one up. Do you pre-drill a hole or anything? Is that helpful? Well, this right here, it, it is helpful a little bit, <clears throat> but this right here, you're going through that uh, plastic, so it's really easy. Not like you're going through metal or anything. Right. So that tack strip that we had across through there, it, it's really unnecessary to drill it. Okay. But you just want to make sure you go through the, you know, you don't want to bring it down here below. If you bring it down here below this, you know, these things could draw up after time. Um, right. Vinyl ones are really bad about drawing up. So I'll come up here and I catch the edge of this and go take, put all of it through there so it don't draw up on us. Let's hope you don't see a, do a catch a video of me poking a hole through this thing. <laughs> I'm not turning off the camera yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Huh? Just in case. So another good tip is make sure you got your good screwdriver that fits in that screw really nice and tight. Because you really got to put pressure to get it to go on. Right. And there's no problem with that screw going into that top and catching oh, it and no. winding it up, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. It poke all the way through there. Ta -da. Ta -da. We did it. We don't have to make another top. Well, see, I can't find anything wrong with it. That's an amazing job. There sure is a big difference between this and just like a factory top, even custom installed, you know? I appreciate it, Scotty. There's just a, a, just a little bit of tweak to I sit out in the sun one day and that's a, every bit of that will go away. But uh, yeah, that's the difference between making a uh, an aftermarket top, a custom top, versus uh, one that you just buy and install. The fit on it's a little better. Um, one thing, it's a custom fit. It's a lot harder to do. You know, you can buy one and, and take it out of a box and install it, but as you've seen at the beginning of the video, um, right down those, uh, right, right above this window right here, you see all that rubber and everything stuck out. That's, all the factory convertible tops are like that. They're just above the, the glass and they just don't look nice. Right. So that's why we make a custom top. When you do a full custom interior and you've got a car that looks like this right here, you know, the first thing when you walk up to the car, you don't want to see a big bulk of rubber, none of it lining up and all that stuff. So we, actually, that was one of the reasons I started making convertible tops is because when I put a stock top on there, nobody actually realized it from the factory that you could see all that rubber. When I got done with the top, I was like, man, why do you see all that rubber? And I was like, well, I just bought a top and put on it. So I took care of that problem. I started making a convertible top for these things, and everybody's like, oh, no, that's the way to do it right there. So that's, that's how we got into custom making convertible tops. And then a lot of cars, when you have a custom car, you can't just buy a convertible top and, stuff and put on it. You have to make one. So there's some applications where it's not an option but to make a convertible top. So that's, that's why we got started in making convertible tops and you know, and I want it to be as nice and as slick as it, it can be. That's why we take so much time and patience in making it that way. Well, brother, you do a nice job. I well, appreciate it, Scotty. I sure appreciate, letting, appreciate you letting us be out here for four days. I know uh, I know we're both ready to put this project to bed, but hopefully the people enjoy it and see the real work that it takes to make. Because like you said, you know, I tell people, it's all in the details, and when you don't do them, they stick out like a sore thumb. Right. And when you do them right, nobody notices. Right. So in this case, man, what a beautiful job. So, well, I appreciate it. Folks, there you go. Custom convertible top from Pro Auto Custom Interior. 59 and pal. I hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya.